Okay, so hopefully this is not going to gum up my sewing machine because I'll be extremely annoyed. Um, I've got my mostly dry art journal cover. Um, I got out my sewing machine. Most of the time I have a denim needle on my machine which is thicker and sharper than your regular sewing needle because um, I do more craft sewing and heavy duty sewing any more than I do dressmaking. I have put in some bright pink thread to start. I do think I'm going to do some with green also. My bobbin is just off white and it can stay that way. I don't care about that part. So I'm just going to do some random sewing. Pick a spot. Doesn't have to be straight. Doesn't have to be. Doesn't even have to, yeah, go in a straight line, curve it around, do some fun things with it. Oh, except I ran out of bobbin thread. Okay. So I guess now the bobbin is going to be pink. All right, I'm gonna wind my bobbin. Okay. I'll be back. Got more thread in my bobbin. We'll start back where I ran out of thread. Let's see. I'll back stitch a little bit. Try to be close to the same where I was before because when you do this kind of sewing on this kind of this isn't fabric. It's really it's just paper, so it leaves a hole. Okay. With your needle in the down position. And keep going until you think you have enough stitching in that color. of stitching sort of next to each other or on top of each other. So something like that. Keep going until you have enough stitching on there that you want. I'm going to do some more sewing and I'll be back. Okay, before I start with the green thread, um, I want to cut it down to the size it needs to be uh, because I do want to take the green thread all the way around the edge of the cover a couple of times. Um, yeah. And I'm not probably done with the inside. The sewing machine is, um, the feed dogs are ripping up the fabric, a I mean the paper a little bit. I'm okay with that though. Um, if you're not, you might want to put fabric on the inside or something. I might... I'm not done with the collaging and the gluing, so I will probably put something else on here. But anyway, so I'm going to just approximate this. Let's see. I do think I like this edge. Okay. 
So. Let's actually do this from the back side. I think we might get a straighter cut. Maybe. I can sort of see where the edge of the Tyvek is. So. Okay. And let's use our rotary cutter. throw this piece away, you'll be able to use it for something. cutter because at some point I'm going to probably cut a hole in something I don't want a hole in. Let's use a pencil. Make a line or score a line. You can kind of see. There we go. Keep doing that. Mark it again. Trim it again. This is also going to save you from gluing things that aren't going to even be on your cover and waste your time. You don't want to cut right on the pencil line or cut just inside so you cut it off. That's nice. I like that. I don't mind that some of the writing shows through. I'm okay with that. If you're not okay with that, you might want to collage another piece of um, baby wipe or something over that. But I'm okay with that. Okay, let's get the machine back up here and get some sewing done. continue around the edge. I'm going to do some sewing in the middle and I'll show you when I'm done. I'll be back. Okay, I'm going to move the camera closer and hopefully not make you too seasick in the meantime. Oops. Alright, so here is the finished cover after all the stitching is done. All the way around. Make sure you go back and forth at the beginning and the end. So your stitches don't unravel over time. Now I am going to... I think I cut off all the parts that I thought needed to be glued down again. So I'm going to finish letting this dry. I don't think it's quite dry all the way. And I am going to take my signatures and cut some cardstock to fit in all the pockets. And maybe add some washi tape to certain parts. I was thinking about that last night. And I will do that and I will be back. Okay, so I have this really brightly colored neon cardstock 
when my daughter was born, I had an, a daycare business. Um, and this cardstock was bought then um, for printing newsletters and things on. Okay, she's 19 and I still have a big ream of cardstock. So, although I'm not reusing junk mail for the inserts, I am reusing what I have and I did not buy anything. So, we're trying to use up this cardstock. It would be nice if it was sometime in my lifetime. Anyway, so I already cut some strips to go in this part. So now I'm cutting in, cutting a bunch of strips to go in these. Hopefully I measured right. Looks like I did. Just grabbing colors at random and making sure there's some piece of cardstock in all the little pockets. And then the only pocket we'll have left is this little one. So I'm going to keep doing that until I get them all full, and then I'll be back once I find my box of washi tape. It's lost in the mess that is my studio at the moment. All right, I'll be back. Okay. So I've got my signatures. Um, all the pockets have card stock in them. There's one back here, one right here. There's this one. And then there's this one. All of them have that. Um, the envelopes are all slightly different, so it was interesting trying to um, cut them all, but I got it done. Um, make sure all of my long ones, I want them to open from the top, not the bottom. Sorry, Shannon. <laughs> um, Shannon did hers, and she did it upside down. Um, so I'm going to try not to repeat that mistake, although now that I said it and it's in my mind, yeah, who knows what will happen. Um, I do think I want to add some washi tape, um, just because, to the signatures. Um, like, maybe where the envelopes meet. I think just to reinforce it a little bit. So let's see what I have. Oh, I have chevron. Yeah, I think that just, I think that looks nice right there. Sorry, I'll try not to mumble. I said I think that looks nice right there. Um, yeah, I like that. And I may even do different washi tape on each one. We'll have to see. On each signature, maybe do different washi tape. Since I have no shortage of washi tape. You know, I started off getting one roll because I thought it was fun and pretty and would be interesting in my art journal. And I now have a lot of washi tape. I'll show you. Give me a second. Yeah, I think I like that. Okay, so now I went from like one roll to this much. I have a lot of washi tape. I have got to stop buying washi tape. So I think just a few pieces like that. I think that's good. I'll do one here. Okay. And maybe one right here where I know that the signature is going to get sewn where these two envelopes meet. So I think to just reinforce it a little bit, I'm going to stick a piece there. Which was my main thought, but you know, of course, I got away with deck. I got a you know, distracted by decorating it with washi tape. Yeah, I like that. It doesn't have to be straight. It's just a junk journal. It's not, you know, it's going to end up being collaged over, written over, journaled over. So, um, but yeah, I like that. Okay. Next. I like the idea of doing different washi tape on each one. So I think I'm going to do that. I'm going to pick out different ones. And I'll be okay, back. so I've got all my signatures. Um, I put washi tape um, where it's going to be sewn, and on some parts of the envelopes um, where they're attached to each other or where there's a seam. 
just to reinforce it a little bit. I did use different colored washi tape on each signature. So now it's time to punch holes and mark the cover. Um, I did take a scrap piece of the neon paper and cut it to the size of the cover, folded it in half, and then in half again so I had a center because I do think I'm going to do a simple three hole binding. Um, I'm probably going to just use regular book binding thread and needles. I don't know what I'm going to do for the closure. I kind of want to go dig out my stash of hair ties, but I think they might be too small. Uh, elastic rubber bands. Um, I'm actually thinking I have this. That actually might look nice. I also have it in this color. No. So I'm going to figure out what I want to do, which I don't know what I want to do. I think I have to figure out the t closure before I do any binding. Because um, I think I want to attach it at the center, in the center hole. Which means I think it has to be ribbon and it's probably going to be this. So I'm going to punch all my holes. I'm going to cut a piece of this off and I'll be back. Okay, there's a lot of uh, book binding videos out there. Um, this is not a hard book binding technique. Um, so what I just did, um, right now I'm punching holes. I'll show you what I did in just a second. Uh, that one doesn't want to go through. Okay, as I said before, I made kind of a jig, um, a hole punch guide. So, and what I did was I figured out where the center of the cover is, punched a hole there, figured out because of the size of the envelope, I want the next hole three and a half inches up from the top and three and a half inches down from the bottom, from that hole to the bottom. I cut the top of the um, guide so I can line that up with the top of my envelope and the hole will still be in the right place and as you can see the bottom hangs over because the bottom is where I'm going to line it up with the cover. I know that probably like makes as much sense as mud is clear but um, trust me so I'm going to punch all my holes in the envelopes Keep it tightly together, punch it here in the seam. If you need to, use some bulldog clips and, and hold it together. And punch all your signatures before you go to the next step. And I have this, yeah, it's a Tim Holtz pokey tool. I like it because it's retractable. What I'm finding is some of the washi tapes are easier to poke through than others. Okay, so now as far as the cover is concerned, we have to figure out how wide our spine is going to be. Hold it, get a crease going. You might even find you want to draw a pencil line.
All right. Okay, I'm trying to fold it so that it's like that. And that so that my back cover is four and three quarters and the other cover is four and three quarters. So then we know where our spine's about one and a quarter inches. So now we're gonna figure out which is the front. I like that one, which is the back. That's important to know before you get started. I'm gonna draw a pencil line inside on one end and the other end. We have six signatures, so we need to evenly space our holes. Um, God, here I have to do math. I hate math. So one, two, three, four, five. That's only five. Something like that. So you want to just mark, have some marks, um, evenly spaced, hopefully, so you know where to lay this um, Lord Almighty. Okay, so. Transferring the holes to the other end of the cover is a problem, so let's see, let's do this. That'll work. And then approximately in the center. Okay. So now what you have to do is you have to line this hole punch guide up and this end of your guide should be flush with the bottom of your front co of your cover and then you line the fold up with your marks your slash marks and then open it and punch your holes that's where your holes should go do that for all six signatures I'll be back okay what I decided to do is sew in one signature and then poke the next holes because I'm losing track of where I am. If you've ever done any book binding before, then you know that punching the holes is the hardest part. So you go in through the center hole. Hopefully you find the hole that you punched. There we go. Leave a tail, go up through the bottom hole, Oops. Okay. back through the center. Tighten a knot. Okay. 
one signature in. Yay! Okay, should look like that. All right, one in, five more to go. I'll be okay, back. so doing one signature at a time and punching the holes in the cover that way works better for me when you have this many signatures. Um, I am fairly new to the whole bookbinding thing, so if I've made some gravest error, excuse me. Um, I did realize after I bound the first couple signatures, although they look the same, all the same from the outside, I did it, I did it wrong. It's not going to come out. There is a proper way to do this thing, these things. So, and I don't know what kind of binding this is called. I just call it a three-hole binding. I don't know what it's called. So I. I've been taking that card out because it's easier. So you go in the center hole through the signature, center hole through the cover, leave a tail, go into the bottom hole in the cover, bottom hole in the signature, okay, pull it out, go all the way up to the top hole. Through the signature and the cover. Oops, don't pull it too tight. You don't want to lose your tail. Into the set back into the center hole through the cover and the signature. Let's see. This can be a little tricky. Okay. You want your two ends on opposite sides of the center string. Pull it tight and tie it off. That's the proper way to do the this, this signature. It's been a while since I've done it, so I kind of forgot that. So look at that. That is nice. So we have our book with all its little flip outs, cute little junk journal. And I've got a piece of ribbon. I don't know, still don't know what I'm going to do about the closure, I have no idea. For now I'll probably just tie it around. I don't know, maybe I'll thread it through this. Let's see. Well, oh, that'll work. Yeah, you know what? I like that. So there we go. Envelope junk journal. I will make sure to post links to Shannon's video on how to do the envelope signatures. And on her video, she's got um, links to where she got the inspiration from to do them. And I obviously forgot to put one back. I'll find it. Um, that's it. I'll be back. I'll see you later and uh, wish me luck on the studio move. Um, I don't know how many more videos I'm going to be able to get done, um, but we'll see. I'll try. All right. See you later. Bye.